The organization of the Soviet army always offers interesting elements to the attention of the historian. One interesting but a little known history is about the role of the humble Soviet tank destroyer brigades in the largest conflict in history. I am The Crow and this is Millennium 7 Star, the channel that gives you unusual perspectives in military history and military technology. Coming up! The Soviets, by the summer of 1941, had a clear perception of the effectiveness of the German tank and mechanized doctrine. And they were scared to death. They were afraid that the same deadly tactics employed against Poland and France could have been replicated against the Soviet Union too. So, to implement a quick countermeasure, in the spring of 1941, the Soviet artillery branch created 10 autonomous tank destroyer brigades. The reaction of the Soviet Union to the German doctrine was, from this perspective, the same as the United States. Tank offensives should not have been confronted by tanks, but by a specialized tank destroyer unit. These brigades were large units for the Soviet standards. More than 5,000 men fully motorized managed a large artillery concentration of 72-76 mm USV divisional guns and 48-85 mm anti-aircraft 52K guns used in an anti-tank role. With a total of about 120 guns, the brigade was expected to defend the front 5-6 to six kilometers long with a density of 20 to 25 guns per kilometer. These brigades suffered badly because, despite being motorized, they couldn't match the mobility of the German forces. Their weapons were indeed effective. The 76mm gun, despite not being an anti-tank gun, was able to cope with all the German tanks up to the Mark IV and the 85mm was almost as powerful as the famous German 8.8cm flak, albeit being quite impractical for field use. However, to be effective, the anti-tank artillery had to be deployed on the field, and this turned out to be extremely difficult to achieve while the German f uh, could still apply their mobile warfare doctrine. Between the end of 1941 and the beginning of 1942, the brigades were disbanded and their regiments reassigned. Till the spring of 1943, there was simply not enough artillery available to form proper brigades, so artillery regiments and battalions were formed instead, using the available equipment, including the 45mm anti-tank gun and the anti-tank rifles. Different types of organizations were tested, some of them local to a specific front, but all these units were embedded within other larger units to support them, rather than autonomously fight against the armored spearheads. In the meanwhile, at the beginning of 1942, the infantry branch started organizing their own tank destroyer brigades, but around a very different concept. They were structured as combined arms task forces, with an anti-tank artillery regiment, a tank battalion, a mortar battalion and an entire mine-laying battalion. It was a balanced unit that could destroy enemy tanks by gunfire, by laying mines and by using its own tanks. It also had its own infantry and fire support to deal with enemy infantry which could be sent forward to clear the route for the tanks. 25 brigades were raised, but they were all destroyed in combat and subsequently disbanded in the first half of 1943. At the beginning of 1943, the tide began to turn. 
a new and more powerful 76.2mm anti-tank gun, the ZIS-3, became available, improving range and lethality. It will become the standard Soviet anti-tank gun with more than 100,000 units produced, remaining in service for many years after the war in dozens of countries. At the same time, the industrial base had reached a production level such that there were enough guns available to start forming anti-tank artillery brigades again. The new anti-tank brigade was smaller than the original, with two heavy regiments, each one with 20 or 24 76mm gun, and one light regiment with 20 or 24 45 or 57mm anti-tank guns. These brigades started to show up in the order of battles in April 1943, and in July the new anti-tank brigades would be an essential element of the Soviet defenses during the Battle of Kursk. For example, the 6th Guards Army had no less than three anti-tank brigades at its disposal. They will be used to form what the Germans term a pack from them a combination of killing zones protected by minefields where the massed anti-tank artillery would try destroying the largest number possible of German tanks. The tactic seemed not to work at first because the Germans employed the new Tiger and Panther tanks in the battle and the 76.2mm gun, while adequate to contrast all the previous models, was defeated by the frontal armor of the new tanks. Only firing at some weak spots, like the machine gun mount or just below the gun, a frontal penetration could have been achieved. However, by the killing zone's tactics and the massing of the anti-tank firepower, it was possible to concentrate enough fire on the target to defeat it. Tank destroyer brigades remained an important asset throughout the war. Up to four of them could have been assigned to an army, which in Soviet organization was more similar to a Western Army Corps. Despite the fact that the Germans could mount major tank operations after Kursk anymore, the number of tank destroyer brigades grew steadily, while their organization won't change much. In the second half of 1944, a battalion of, of SU-85 tank destroyers was added, and that will be practically it till the end of the Second World War. In January 1945, the Soviet order of battle included 56 brigades and 111 separate anti-tank regiments, a clear sign of the importance that the Russian conferred to them. I hope the short video was interesting. If you want to learn more about the history of military organization, click on the links uh, on the video. Please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, like and share on social media, it means the world to me. For now, thank you for watching, goodbye.